Hey there guys, Nintendo PSX here, and welcome to yet another Hyrule Warriors video. This one is more of an analysis of what stuff from Zelda games have we seen in Hyrule Warriors. Now, I've split it between games from the earliest ones to the current ones. So, we're going to get started with the first earliest games that I can see things from, which is Ocarina of Time. So, first off, we have the design of the Great Fairy based on Ocarina of Time. So we have Gorons that share a similar resemblance to those found in Ocarina of Time compared to the ones in Twilight Princess. Uh, there are Stall Children, Stallfos, Lizalfos, King Dodongo as enemies, designs from Ocarina of Time as well. As for weapons, we have seen uh, the Heavy Gauntlets and the Hookshot from Ocarina of Time. Now, uh, we've also seen Hyrule Castle, which bears a similar design to that of in Ocarina of Time, but also seems to be like a tad bit of a combination of that in Twilight Princess. And through the badges system in the game, which if you don't know, badges are used to create upgrades or buffs or powers for your characters, there are there's a Golden Skullchilla badge, which is really interesting how they're also bringing in different icons and elements from those Zelda games as badges. Uh, we've only seen one thing from Majora's Mask, unfortunately, and that is Majora's Moon itself that can be called down with the hookshot. Now, past Majora's Mask is Wind Waker, and the only thing we've seen from Wind Waker is the actual Wind Waker uh, item, which is used to conjure tornadoes, uh, wind blasts, electricity, and also music notes, probably in the form of that said electricity. But if you look at the Wind Waker, it definitely looks modified to be a bit more cutesy as it is seen as a weapon that Zelda is using and not a weapon that Link is holding. Uh, past Wind Waker is where we start to get into the big gritty stuff with details because this is where we start to go into Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. So first off, Twilight Princess, we see Zelda and Link DLC costumes for the Twilight Princess designs. Which is really interesting because it's just, it does no benefit, it's just legitimately just costumes of those Zelda games. So it's like, hey, do you want to buy costume? you want to play as Link from Twilight Princess or Zelda from Twilight Princess? Buy these costumes and then you can play as them. Uh, these costumes though are only DLC, free DLC for Japan. I'm sure we'll get it though, because of uh, Tecmo Koei's track record. Uh, as for characters from Twilight Princess, we have Agatha, who we've seen fight with bugs, and the golden bugs that she always wants Link to bring her. Excuse me, I don't know why I was yawning. I'm tired. Uh, Zant is also set to appear into the game as a villain. He has many variations on the Twilight Princess bosses that he appears to play in, one of them being the totem pole from the based on the, fo the forest temple boss fight or mini boss fight I should say against Ook. Now uh, back to the playable character though we have Midna uh, who we've seen riding a twilight wolf or some form of twilight creature that is within the shape of a wolf to emulate that of how she would be with a wolf if it was Link. Obviously it can't be Link though but so they fit that into her you know form of twilight stuff so they can have her be on a wolf. Uh, now going back to villains, we have Argorok, which is a boss from um, the p Temple in the Sky, uh, who you would fight in Twilight Princess. He, has sp he sports the same design, and he seems to be centered around the hook shot, much like he is in Twilight Princess. Now as for enemies in Twilight Princess, we've seen Boblins, King Boblin, Dark Nuts, Eralfos, and that's about it for the enemies from Twilight Princess so far. I think there may be others that I may not have mentioned, but if there are, just again put so in the comments, and I will be sure to put an addendum or some form of that. But so far, those are the only ones that I was able to notice from Twilight Princess. Now, as for weapons, there's quite a bit from Twilight Princess, actually. We have Zelda's Rapier. We have Zelda's bow slash light arrows, which emulates the one that she gets in Twilight Princess from the three, um, the four Providence sp light spirits. Uh, Link has the ball and chain once again, even though it's in combination with the heavy gauntlets, the ball and chain has returned. And we also see Link pulling out of a chest the hero's bow, which is again based on the Twilight Princess design. I'll put comparisons for designs uh, next to each other. 
uh, I will notice, I will note this uh, later on when we get to Skyward Sword, but it looks like the bow might possibly upgrade or level up into the Skyward Sword's uh, Sacred Bow. Anyways, locations from Twilight Princess we can see are Bridge of Elden, Kakariko Village, and the Palace of Twilight. These are some really nice locations to be able to, you know, fight in from Twilight Princess, especially the Bridge of Elden. Bridge of Elden is just such a great, just a kind, like kind of an iconic stage from Zelda, just because of, uh, you know, all the great stuff that happens on that stage in Twilight Princess, and also because of Super Smash Brothers. But anyways, it's not about Super Smash Brothers. We're going to move right on to Skyward Sword, which is the, some of the most latest stuff we've seen from Hyrule Warriors and from a Zelda game, other than A Link Between Worlds. Um, first off, we have Link and Zelda DLC costumes for Skyward Sword designs, similar to the Twilight Princess design as costumes, but they're for Skyward Sword. So you can be Skyward Sword Zelda or Skyward Sword Link, and I very much love their designs, so I'll probably end up using them if I use Link or Zelda. Uh, also characters from Skyward Sword is Fee, the embodiment of the Master Sword, created by the goddess Hylia. You can see her using her Silent Realm singing stuff. You can see the kind of the platform stuff while Link goes to the Silent Realm. You can see the Skyward Strikes, Skyward Strikes goddess symbol. Uh, not sure how it's going to play in, but it is there. You can see the three elements of the sword uh, going around her, the flames of uh, Din, Nehru, and Ferore. And she can also change into the Goddess Sword before it becomes the Master Sword. I'm going to assume this is how Link in this game gets the Master Sword, for whatever reason, as he need, need it, because the Master Sword is the iconic weapon. But we haven't seen Link use the Master Sword before, so I guess we can assume that Fee, you know, becomes the Master Sword once again, and it is Link that will use it. Uh, out of villains, we have Girahim, who has his own sword too, and possibly his crazy dance, based on the images that we can get, that we have gotten, I should say. Uh, there's also the Imprisoned, who doesn't seem like he has his other forms, uh, with the one with the arms or the one with the halo. We can only see the Imprisoned in his first form that you fight him in, because you fight him three times in Skyward Sword, if you were unaware. Uh, out of the regular enemies, we have Bokoblins, Moblins, Stallmaster... Lizal and Lizalfos. So it's really cool to see these enemies come in from as well as designs because, you know, Twilight, uh, Twilight, excuse me, <laughs> Skyward Sword has some really awesome uh, enemy designs, you know, besides the Bokoblins, but the Stallmaster is really awesome and the way they made the Lizalfos was also really cool. Uh, out of items, we have Link's sacred, sacred Bow, which is the fully upgraded hero's bow that you can get in Skyward Sword by handing in different items to modify it and make it stronger. Uh, the heart containers of this game are uh, are their own design, but it also looks heavily based on the ones from Skyward Sword. I will also put uh, comparison images so you guys can get a better look at that. Now, the hookshot targets. This is something I found really interesting. They're using the hookshot from o um, excuse me, Ocarina of Time, but the targets themselves are the designs from Skyward Sword. It's really, really interesting in my opinion. How they're just, you know, combining all these different elements of Zelda to make this big, you know, like, central, like, hey, this is a big Zelda game stuff. Uh, there is also one of the, I'm not sure if it was a badge or something else, but the stamina fruit from Skyward Sword makes an appearance in one of the images. I wish I knew Japanese so I could better accentuate what it actually is, but I don't, so unfortunately, if you want to figure out about that, you're going to have to learn Japanese. Uh, they unveiled it ton of locations from uh, Skyward Sword so I'm gonna go right into that uh, we can see all locations on Skyloft being fought in uh, the goddess statue near the near the the sword built the sword training building or whatever it is the uh, cadet building wherever you start off with in Skyward Sword I, f I completely forget I'm sorry and then different fighting in different places on Skyloft but there's also places in the sky uh, including the pumpkin landing the Isle of Songs and Fun Fun Island it's really interesting how even though you're fighting on Skyloft, you get to see all these other islands like in the background. It's really, really cool and really interesting, especially to see all these locations done in HD for the first time and probably the only time I'll ever see these locations in HD, so it's really, really cool. Um, besides the, the sky and Skyloft, we also have a location from the ground, which we have the Forest Sanctuary, Farron Woods, and <laughs> the Grusinator, which is, oh, if, if you are aware... A, one of the weapons that Groose created 
to combat the imprisoned one, which actually really helped you in the game. But that's about all I was able to notice and peel from different designs and different uh, items and enemies that were pulled in from different Zelda games. Uh, so far though, there's quite a few games that we haven't seen so far. We haven't seen anything from Zelda 2, there's no Dark Link, there's no Great Palace. We haven't seen anything from A Link to the Past, no Dark World, uh, there's no Giant Pyramid. We haven't seen, uh, you know, even just uh, Aghanim. There's nothing from Link's Awakening, nothing from the Oracle games, Oracle of Ages or Seasons, nothing from Minish Cap. I really want to see Body, by the way. Nothing from Four Swords or Four Swords Adventures. Uh, there's nothing from Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks or even A Link Between Worlds. And I would really love to see Hilda as a playable character. I mean, sure, she's so new. I mean, she came out just last year, like just last fall. But, you know, A Link Between Worlds was a really great Zelda game, and Hilda would be an awesome character to play as. I would just love to play as Hilda, you know, use her staff or whatever magic sh she can bring to the game. I would just love to use Hilda. But anyways, uh, back on track. Um, even though they did have the Wind Waker and the Majora's Moon from Majora's Mask and Wind Waker, we still don't have uh, any locations from Majora's Mask or any locations from... Wind Waker. We don't have any enemy designs from Wind Waker or Majora's Mask. I can understand not having designs from Wind Waker because, you know, the tune designs kind of wouldn't really fit to the uh, to the art style slash uh, artistic design that is of Hyrule Warriors. It's more of a more of a realistic uh, not realistic, but more realism with you know really proportionate human beings rather than the tune games so i don't think we'll really be seeing anything character wise from wind waker or any of the tune games but we might see location so we might see the great sea or something like that but i'm going to stop speculations this was supposed to be about facts so i brought you the facts of different zelda games uh what the designs and stuff that came from in hyrule warriors if you saw something that i didn't notice please tell me in the comments as i would love to make another video like this i love finding little details of different characters from Zelda that are in Hyrule Warriors. I'm probably going to be doing Hyrule Warriors videos all the way up until the game's release and probably beyond. So if you guys are still interested in Hyrule Warriors, definitely subscribe to find out new information and just little details that I can pick out from it. So, I will see you guys in the next video. See you guys next time.